Hi everybody and thank you for joining me. Today we are going to look at directed numbers, which means we're going to look at how we handle positive and negative integers. It's not a big subject, but it is so important because if you can't handle the minus number, it makes it difficult when we are working in the world of algebra. So let's take a look. So what exactly does directed numbers mean? Well, we can have two types of numbers. We can have a positive number, let's say the number 6, and also a negative number, let's say minus 6. And quite simply, if we think of a positive number as going in this direction, then a negative number goes in the opposite direction. You might also think of a positive number being one that is going up, in which case a negative number would be going down. This means then that we have to consider all negative numbers as well as positive ones. And a good way to do this is often with a number line as the one we see here. This has zero in the center and all the positive numbers get larger as we go in this direction and the negative numbers go in the opposite direction. Let's first of all try out a very simple sum using a number line. The way it works is we look at the first number in the sum. In this case, it's a 5. Now, the rule is if there isn't a minus sign in front of it, that means it's a plus 5. Now, the first number in the sum is telling us where to start on the number line. In this case, at the plus 5. We then look at the next number. It's a 7 and it's got a plus in front of it, therefore it is a plus 7. So from here we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places in the plus direction, which of course gives us the answer 12. Now let's change that a little bit. Let's say this sum was actually 5 minus 7. We will start again with the 5. It is a plus 5. So once again, we are going to start here. Now, this time, the 7 has a minus in front of it. It is therefore a minus 7. Because it is a minus number, we go in the opposite direction. So in this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Don't forget 0 is a number. 6, 7. 7. And in this case, we end up at minus 2. So 5 minus 7 equals minus 2. Let's have a look at another couple of examples. Here we have minus 4 minus 6. Now this time, the first number in the sum is a minus 4. So that is where we are going to start, at the minus 4. The next number also has a minus in front. It's minus 6. So because it is minus, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in this direction, and we land on minus 10. So minus 4 minus 6 is minus 10. Let's once again change the sum a little bit, and this time we will call it minus 4 plus 6. Again, we are starting on minus 4, which is here, but this time the next number is a plus 6, and we know that pluses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 go in this direction. Therefore, we end up on positive or plus 2. There are a couple of rules that we need to learn when we are adding and subtracting directed numbers. Let's have a sum such as this one. Let's say 3, take away, take away 8. Now that might look very strange, but what it is telling us to do is to start with a 3 and then subtract minus 8. The good thing is we have a simple rule to make this an awful lot simpler. And the rule is, if we see two minus signs together in the middle of a sum, we cross them out and they become a positive. So in fact, this sum is simply 3 plus 8. Two minuses together are a positive. 
Now the other thing that you might see is 3 plus minus 8 or 3 take away plus 8. In these two cases in the middle of the sum we have a plus and a minus together. In both cases whichever way round we cross them both out and it becomes a minus. So where the two symbols are different they become a minus where we have two minuses they become a plus. Let's put a couple of examples of these onto the number line then. First of all let's look at 2 minus minus 6. Well we are starting the sum with a 2 and it's a plus 2 there is no minus there so a plus 2 we are going to start at the 2. There are two minuses we know the rule cross them both out and it becomes a plus so we now have a plus 6 therefore 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 we end up on 8 because the sum is now 2 plus 6. And finally let's have a look at 3 plus minus 8. Again we are starting with a positive number it is a 3 therefore we are going to start here. We now have a plus and a minus sign together we cross them out when the signs are different it becomes a minus. So we now know that we have a minus 8 so we are going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 places and end up at minus 5. Now let's have a look at the rules when we are multiplying and dividing with both positive and negative numbers. And first of all let's establish one fact. If we are going to multiply two numbers together, let's say we are multiplying 8 times 3. The answer to 8 times 3 is always going to be 24. It doesn't matter whether these numbers are minus or plus, the answer will be 24. The only thing we need to establish is whether it's going to be a plus 24 or a minus 24. So let's have a look at some of the options. Well the one that we've written on the board here, we have a plus 8 and a plus 3. Everything is positive 8 times 3 therefore we have 24. Now let's change this sum ever so slightly and call it 8 times minus 3. Now here we have a plus number and we have a minus number and the rule is if we are multiplying a plus and a minus together the answer comes out minus. Don't forget the answer is 24, therefore minus 24. Let's change it round again. Let's make the 8 the minus number and multiply it by 3. Now once again we have a minus and we are multiplying it by a plus. If the two signs are different, a minus and a plus, the answer is a minus 24. The fourth option will be where both numbers are in fact negative, both minuses. So we now have minus 8 times minus 3. Now in this case we are multiplying a minus by a minus. And the rule in this case, a minus times a minus is a positive. Therefore the answer is plus 24. Let's have a look at this in a table to see if it can help us memorize these rules. So here we are the first line is telling us that a plus multiplied by a plus is indeed a plus. A plus times a minus comes out as a minus. Minus times plus similarly is a minus and two minuses are a plus. Maybe a good way to think of this is if the two symbols that we are multiplying are the same, so a plus times a plus or a minus times a minus, we end up with the plus. If the two signs are different, one of each, no matter which way around, the answer is going to be a minus. Let's finish with four examples. We have 4 times 6, so this is a plus 4 and a plus 6 because there are no minus signs, so 4 times 6 is 24. Everything is positive. We now have a minus 
4 multiplied by a plus 6. Don't forget, if there is no minus, it is plus. So we now have a minus times a plus. The answer comes out as minus 24 again. We now have 6 times 7. We know it's 42. 6 times 7 is always 42. But actually, we have a plus here and a minus here. When the signs are different, it comes out as a minus. And here, 5 times 7, that's definitely 35. But we have two minuses. When the signs are the same, the answer is a positive 35. I don't think I can stress strongly enough that learning the rules that apply to the positives and negatives is absolutely vital. I hope you found that useful. If you have, please do subscribe. The button's right there below. And if you want to look at some of my other videos, there's a link to one of them on the side here. And if you hit the notification button as well, you'll get to hear of any new ones. Thank you.